Hi there, uh, it's Jimmy Crab here from uh, AbsoluteQuartzCrystals.com and uh, for one I've been threatening to do a little bit video on uh, all the different types of crystals that come from the Book and Note Hook area. Uh, there's the Spirit Quartz Crystals, uh, Cactus Quartz Crystals, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the fact I, I need to point out first is they're not Michalisberg Crystals, as some sites still refer to them. Uh, the Michalisberg area is a, on a three, four hour driveway from where the crystals are actually found. And it's a bit of a disinformation campaign by a couple of guys, you know who you are, who when they were first found uh, didn't want anybody else to get their hands on them, so um, they put out the rumour that they were from the Michalisburg area, or in fact they're actually from uh, a place called Bukunotuk. Now there's no official uh, naming system for them, so some people refer to them as spirit quartz, some people refer to them as cactus quartz. I personally think they should be all referred to as cactus quartz because of the shape, but um, the color is where the, the spirit court comes in. If I just grab my camera here and I'll try and get a close up. Uh, right, here we go. Uh, this is the um, the classic spirit court's color. I'll try and get a close up on that. It's a nice dark purple amethyst. It's the same color as methylated spirits, and that's where the name comes from. Uh, methylated spirits is, of course, a clean agent. It's a mixture of ethanol and methanol and, uh, and then they add some uh, methylene blue or methyl violet to make it uh, poisonous and undrinkable uh, but as any hobo with his salt knows you just pour it through a half loaf of bread and it'll at least get the the coloring out still contains methanol still poisonous but you know hobos being hobos um, now the most classic type of crystals are or should I say the most common type of crystals are these it's your uh, sort of a, a lilac mauve colour. Grab that on my other camera here. Get a close up of that. Um, the, the classic look is this. It's, it's a, let's see if I can focus on it. You've got the uh, nice crystal points with this, these fine, sugary, glittery, drizzy crystals uh, down the sides of the uh, the shafts of the crystal. Uh, now. More recently, the, the, the newer find, very similar, it's more like this. Again, let me get my camera on that. Uh, the difference here is these side crystals, they aren't quite as glittery, they're a lot more chunky. I actually prefer these, uh, but uh, the, the colors vary from white right through to dark purple, but I, I just like the, the structure of these, and I'm hoping we get more of them. I'm just going to run through a couple of the different um, colors and configurations that are come from the mine. Um, I've recently just sold, uh, I don't know, about uh, close on half a ton, uh, so I've just pulled out a few odds and ends that I've got lying around, so just basic general idea of what there is. As I say, we've got the, I've showed the, the classic ones, uh, but lately what we've also been getting is uh, these, let's see if I can get close up there, uh, people are calling them sunshine quartz. Get on the other camera. It's this lovely deep yellow golden color. Now that color isn't actually in the rock. Uh, it's, it's a coating of guthite, uh, which will come off uh, if uh, placed in uh, oxalic acid or hydrochloric acid. But it's uh, still a very nice color. Another one that's somewhat common. Well, first let me show you. Uh, uh, they don't look anything like this when they come out of the ground. Uh, when I go up to the mine and buy them, they look more like this. Uh, get a close up on that. It's it's, it's a, a lump of mud. Uh, now I don't know what's under this. Uh, sometime I might do a, another video on the, the cleaning process. And as you can see, it's also possible to tell exactly what you've got under there. I've, I think this one's going to be more of the lilac colour, but it's almost impossible to tell until you've cleaned it up. So uh, as I say, uh, uh, this is what I've got lying around. Another personal favourite of mine is these. Uh, these are what's referred to as uh, fairy quartz, unofficially, but that's why I refer to them. Uh, if we get in there with the other camera, you see it just needs a lot of cleaning, but at least you can see the glitter coming through. These don't have the color of, of the uh, the purple ones or the yellow ones, but if I show you a cleaned up one, they generally form these really intricate uh, clusters, and uh, those Drizzy crystals on the outside have got a very high refractive index, so they're very glittery. And uh, if you get them in direct sunlight, they're absolutely gorgeous. I love these. Um, 
but I have to say, probably my personal favourite, and uh, not a lot of it was ever available. I'm actually negotiating with the guys at the mine to reopen the hole that it came out, see if they can't find any more. But in my opinion, the best is this stuff. The uh, dark, black, smoky quartz. Now, if you can imagine a, a, a freestanding crystal, uh, something like this. Yeah. If you can imagine a crystal like this, in this color, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I just wish they could uh, find more of it. The most sought after, of course, would be crystals like that, but with this sort of coloring. If you can imagine that in that. Uh, they do come out from time to time, but the fact is, the miners know what they've got. They know they've hit pay dirt, and the prices do get quite horrendous, but uh, well worth it. They're, they're gorgeous crystals. Uh, a couple of other types that have been coming out uh, lately are these uh, long fingers. But once again, just uh, focusing on that. Very glittery outside, and some nice long, nice long single crystals. And uh, from a hole nearby, well, with these ones, they're with the more of the, the gnarly uh, exterior, but also really nice long glittery crystals. Uh, I really do like these. Uh, colors vary, as I say, from uh, the, the dark purple to the dark uh, smoky, lilac, mauve. There's another personal one. This is available on my website, this one particularly. That's this mauve -ish glittery color. Wish I could get more of this. This is just one batch that I, that I managed to get my hands on. And you also get the plain white, uh, something like this. Now, this is a piece that just really grabbed my fancy eye. Yeah, it's a, I, I call this one the snail, for obvious reasons. Uh, as you can see, it's a freestanding display piece. And uh, so the white stuff, although it's not as sought after uh, as the coloured, uh, there's some beautiful stuff in the white as well. Uh, also you get, instead of crystals and clusters, you also, you also get plates. Here's one in the sunshine yellow. I don't think this camera's good enough for me to do it this one. Also in the process of being cleaned up. But these, although they're not single crystals or clusters, they come through in this color, they come through in white, purple, smoky, all from the same area. So I guess what I'm saying is all these different crystals, you get all these different configurations and all these different colors, and they can mix and match. You never know what you're going to get. You might get a, a deep purple plate or a single or a cluster and same, at the same time it might be white or yellow or orange all depends on which hole it comes from I will put in some footage of the actual mine uh, after this uh, it's quite a scary place <laughs> but uh, a lot of fun um, just uh, another one uh, just uh, an absolute favorite of mine and uh, this is very rare not many of them ever come out because you don't get a whole pocket of it if you're lucky there'll be one or two in a pocket if you're lucky but this is Get on the camera there, don't know if it's going to show up. It's with it is amethyst with hematite. If I zoom in on that, so you get the red of the amethyst, the purple of the sorry, the red of the hematite with the purple of the amethyst. It's this lovely deep plum color. I don't know how that's being picked up from the camera. Uh, similar to that is uh, I don't know where I picked that one. Oh, here we go. Here's one with uh, hematite and sunshine quartz, which is the glutite and the, the purple. It gives this lovely, um, know, fruity, uh, fruit cocktail kind of peach color. Once again, these are kind of like uh, hen's teeth. you only lucky if they get one or two per batch. So you just have to uh, cross your fingers and hope for the best. So that's a, a brief overview of uh, the different types and colors. Uh, obviously there's a lot more. I don't have an example of everything on hand. I've just sold a hell of a lot. So most of these are available on my website at www.absolutequartzcrystals.com. But if you want to buy some uh, yeah, bulk, uh, several kilograms, just uh, contact me as well. I am, in, I am in the process of setting up a, a wholesale section. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go, let me run the footage and let's have a look at the mine itself, which is really interesting. Okay, so uh, here we are in Bukenote Hook, which is a, a largely rural community. Uh, there's practically nothing by way of formal employment. There's a couple of uh, shops and that's about it. Uh, as you can see, it's somewhat desolate. 
um, mostly people living in shacks uh, but there are some nice houses as well and in some places there's nothing but bloody great holes in the ground uh, where they found the crystals as you can see here this is one old chap who lets his land out for people to go digging and uh, this is an average hole I mean some of these go down oh man 20 30 meters straight down uh, you've got to keep your eyes about now I have to apologize for the quality of this video because if you're not looking where you're going you disappear down one of those holes and you're never seen again yeah there's just a scruddy piece that I picked up and uh, here's some more of the holes now if you look have a look at those ladders okay there's a piece of quartz but those ladders that's pretty much what people are using to go down man uh, 20 30 meters straight down uh, there's no such thing as health and safety there's no such thing as shoring or support columns or anything like that it's just digging straight into the clay in the side of the mountain and then following the quartz veins hoping to find uh, some crystals uh, the, the entire area is just like, like Swiss cheese full of holes and uh, sometimes they get lucky and sometimes they don't uh, here's a little piece I picked up uh, pretty scruddy and I thought I'd take it home and clean it up uh, wondering what it would come out like and after spending an inordinate amount of time, a ridiculous amount of time, uh, there it is. This has been put in oxalic acid and then soaked in hydrochloric acid uh, and then scrubbed with a, uh, a nylon brush and with a brass brush and then uh, power washed and whatnot. And it came up quite nice and the bits of clay that are left just have to stay. Uh, this is another idea of one of the holes. Now, in order to get to this hole, uh, we've climbed down one of those rickety ladders uh, so this is a hole within a hole if that makes any sort of sense and uh, I've actually given the camera here to my friend uh, so he could lead the way because otherwise with me coming up behind it'd be a rather distasteful video of his backside as I crawl along behind him but as you can see on the rock face there that's where the crystals were obviously the nearer to the, uh, the, the front of the mine that's all been removed so you have to go deeper and deeper to get more and more crystals and uh, this particular hole uh, we went in a, a reasonable amount but it goes in and I'm going to estimate some in the region of 80 meters uh, goes right beyond the house that, we, uh, that the guy stays in and through the neighbor's property and whatnot it's really really scary as I said at this point there, there's no shoring there, there's no uh, support and uh, if there's a cave in you just simply disappear and you're never ever heard of again Uh, there's water down at the bottom there uh, we just had uh, quite big drought breaking rains so the water table had lifted uh, so at this point we didn't go any further but as that water drops a bit uh, you go through there and then we go in I really can't tell you how far but I'm gonna guess that's between 60 and 80 meters uh, you can multiply that by three to roughly get the distance in feet and uh, it's not a place you want to be if you're at all uh, uh, claustrophobic or have a problem with uh, enclosed spaces. It's really humid. It's really hot. Oh, and there comes my mate Norman. He came down with us as well. He's not so much a digger. He's something of a, a wheeler dealer. His dad owns one of the local shops and he uh, buys and sells uh, the crystals. Uh, also, just point out where... Uh, the, the quartz vein had, uh, had run where the crystals came from and at some point here I remember distinctly I took the camera and there was a lot of uh, blasphemy and vulgarity as I smashed my head into the, the rock above yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a tall guy and these things are there's literally wiggling crawling space it's not really a, a place you can walk in and uh, yeah, I did myself some great damage to my head and my elbows and my knees it's not a hell of a lot of fun the first crystals were found here uh, somewhere in the late 90s and uh, obviously nobody really knew they were worth anything and uh, one or two rock dealers got a got, got a, a whiff of it and started buying it up and that's where the rumor started that they were coming from the Michalisburg area so the first couple of guys pretty much had the area sewn up but after after a bit of time obviously the word got out and 
yeah, more and more people could get, get in there, and uh, so more and more, more and more people started digging. I'd say there's about 100 to 150 people diggers in the area. They're, they're not all digging at the same time, and uh, even then, uh, a hell of a lot of the digging is kind of pointless because you dig from pocket to pocket, so you're not digging crystals the whole time. A lot of it is just uh, moving earth to get to the crystals at the crystal face. They're looking up again. That's how far we came down to get to the hole that we then went into. This is a much better one. Uh, this is somewhat more sensible. We can stand upright. I quite enjoyed this one. It actually makes something of a, a whacked out place to live because the different chambers coming from the main chamber, uh, with a bit of work in the imagination, could be turned into a, you know, some sort of a home underground. And uh, this is directly into the, the rock, so it's a lot more stable than, 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 than the hole dug into the clay. I say the whole area is just uh, yeah, like Swiss cheese. Uh, the, the, there's tunnels running everywhere. Hundreds, hundreds of holes. And uh, I actually didn't even film some of the scarier ones, because when you're looking straight down a hole that you can't even see the bottom of, it, it kind of gives you the heebies. And there we have it. A uh, nice day in Buknautuk. This was a Sunday, and I could actually hear the uh, the drums and the singing coming up from the churches. Uh, it's a predominantly Zulu area, so a lot of music, and there's you know, music coming up from the from the valley.